Wow. Oh, very strong. Incredibly easy. I'm happy about that for two reasons. The first was that the uh, director definitely listened to us and, and took the camera shot out uh, well in advance so we didn't miss any of the lift. And then also, what an easy opener. Yeah. Well, you know, her last two meets were at 45 kilos. Looks right. like she's gained back into the original class we competed in was 40, 48, 48, 49. Yeah. So this will be good for her. You know, the extra weight obviously looks like it's paying off. Yeah. And this is her third world, uh, third European championship, sorry. Uh, 2017, 2018, 2021. And then in 2019, she went to the world championships uh, as a 45 kilo weightlifter, uh, where she went 60, 78, so. Or 60, 76, sorry. And I think just like with the 45 kilo session, we're gonna see her follow herself a little bit. Once she's through, then I think maybe we're gonna start seeing a bit of, bit more of a back and forth between lifters. But right now she's she's opted for 57 kilos. Interestingly, we were just taking a look at the uh, at the results from the last European Championships in this 49 kilo category. And only one athlete from the top six last year is even competing today in this session. That athlete is probably everybody's favorite for this one, the Italian Julia Imperio. She placed fourth, she snatched 81 kilos, she cleaned the joke 97 kilos for a 178 total. You can see her now on the screen, uh, still on the bar. Obviously she's probably gonna be the last person to lift. She's maybe 20 plus minutes out at this point, so barely started her warm up. Uh, but outside of Julian Perio last year, we had uh, two Romanians who are obviously ineligible to lift this year. Russians, uh, one Russian who, you know, the Russians are unable to lift this year. Uh, and then a, a Turkish lifter who just won the 45 kilo session, Sazia Erdogan, the 2019 world champ. She's now cut down to 45. And then Anel Michel from France who is, is not lifting. Yeah, it's really wide open. Right. Here we have the second attempt, Tiana Mer from Croatia, 57 kilos. Okay. So like we were talking about last session, mm -hmm. the strategy of, you know, essentially power snatching your first attempt and letting the weight push you down as the weight gets heavier. Yep. Looked like she had a similar sort of style to that, and uh, you could see it was definitely less stable. Yes. Caught the bar a little further back. Yeah. She has the power as a technique, but that change in technique from first to second attempt with more weight definitely, you know, it has an effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I'd love to see a replay. Take a look at that bottom position if possible, because she actually catches it with pretty vertical shins. She just has such impressive mobility that she doesn't actually push her knees quickly forward. Same with that head position. She doesn't end up with the bar behind her head. She's just right. in this incredibly vertical torso position, uh, arms straight up. Anytime you do that, there's a compromise somewhere, right? There's yeah. got to be a balance, so she could, could lose balance because of that. And she's going to get a rest between her second and third attempt because we now have the opener of the Moldovan lifter, Concordia Butnari, 58 kilos. very nice. Yeah, both of her teammates in the last session were also very, very solid openers. Yeah. Good lift, Butnari, Concordia. And Concordia is one of the, well, one of the three lifters who's only competed internationally once. Uh, her best total, 133 kilos. That was at the European Junior Championships back in 2019. So, I mean, it's been two and a half years she, since she competed internationally. 58 kilo snatch then. She's just equaled it again now. So it's not bad progress if, you know, in two and a half years you're opening with your best lift from that previous competition. There is a change in 60 kilograms on the bar. Another thing that Max and I were mentioning last, last session is just how impressive the Moldovan First team has become. They really were not, when I got into the sport, certainly, you know, 50 years ago and Max got into the sport, <laughs> um, the Moldovans weren't particularly a team that you looked at and thought, these are the best weightlifters in Europe. And, you know, I don't think they can quite make that claim now, but they're certainly in the pursuit for it. They're climbing the ranks. There are far more Moldovans lifting at an elite A-level internationally than we've ever seen before, and they're doing a phenomenal job. Absolutely. They're making a name for themselves right now. Right. 
They've got that custom Aleko Moldovan singlet. It looks like she's going to come out again at 61 kilos, which does make me wonder how much of a jump we're going to see for the last lifter's third attempt. Like she's taking because Tiana. What did she hit on her second attempt? Fifty-seven. So she's, she's taking a large jump. She went fifty-three, fifty-seven. So she's looking for another four kilo jump. Uh, obviously, right to sixty-one. She gets to take the lift after because it's the third attempt. This just a second attempt. So I guess we'll see her come out straight after this. This second attempt for Concordia Butnari, sixty-one kilos. Very, very good left. Yeah. I mean, that's a great bottom position. Yeah. It's, it's in stark contrast, uh, I would say, to Tiada's bottom position where she is. She doesn't have that same vertical torso, but she just gets the bar so nicely behind her head. It, it looks far more secure. Well, the obvious benefit, too, is with that extra mobility and in the deep bottom position like that, she had the presence of mind to be able to stop, right. find her balance, and then yeah. recover. Uh, when you're off balance, if your hips are too far back or your shins are vertical or something, it's difficult to make adjustments. Yeah, you've just got to get up out there quick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, she was able to just sit down there, spend a bit of time uh, making sure she was in a comfortable position before she came up. But now we're going to see it. Tiana Meyer from Croatia, her third attempt at 61 kilos. Uh, this is, well, this would actually be the second most she's ever made internationally. Her best ever snatch, 64 kilos back in 2018. Ah. Yeah, that's great. Much better. Yeah. Made, made adjustment, caught it in perfect balance there. Yeah, I mean, she bounced out of that like yeah. she was cleaning the weight. Yeah, that was like could have been an opener. Right. Yeah. Yeah, she'll be very pleased with that. That's 61 kilos. That's three for three. I don't think we saw. No, we did see a three for three in the last session. And in the last session, just like in this one, it was the first person to come out went three for three. Uh, I think sometimes when you come out first, there's that fear that you're going to miss and mm. be the first miss of the competition. You open a little bit lighter than maybe you would otherwise if someone else was lifting before you. Uh, and then you just get into this nice groove of making weights, taking the jump, making weights. She'll have the benefit too of a little bit more rest for the clean injury. Right, right. Gosh, that lift looked easy. Yeah, that was good. So Maris Triscala from Luxembourg coming out for her opening attempt now, 62 kilos. And this is her first international meet. Right, it is, yeah. So I guess this, uh, if successful, is an international personal record for Mara. Yep. Strong opener. Strong, yep, strong lift. I tell you what, she sweeps the bar back off the floor, like, a lot. <laughs> considerably. Yes. Um, had to, s well, I wouldn't say save it. Had to sit there in the bottom of the overhead just to make sure she, you know, she'd stabilized everything, but a comfortable opener. Yeah. And you know, a lot of the nerves and adrenaline that come with that opening lift mm -hmm. can, can really amplify the power you have. So your last warm up might feel significantly worse than your first opener right. or your opener. Uh, so, yeah, she might have just pushed it a little far back, a little over pull, but clearly within her abilities. Yeah. She's got, she's got plenty more there. This now the opening attempt for Rebecca Copeland from Ireland. Her second international meet. And that's a good lift. Just uh, check that it is before I say it. It is, yeah. That's a three kilo personal record. Yeah, solid <laughs> lift. <laughs> yeah, not a bad competition. Uh, not a bad lift. Her last competition, her only competition, was actually the Naeem Suleimanolu tournament back in 2019, which, if I remember correctly, was a uh, a bronze tier event. It was an Olympic qualifier. Um, and a f it, despite the fact that it was actually such a small competition, a few big names went, most notably Lash Talakadze turned up. Um, 
didn't put on as much of a show as he as he normally would, but a lot of good lifters used that as a qualifier for the Olympics. Here's 63 kilos. Final attempt for Concordia Butnari from Moldova at 63 kilos. And uh, that's a real shame. Looks like it was all mental there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the bar had enough speed yeah. coming off the floor. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it had enough speed to be a successful lift, but it had enough speed to, you know, be a successful lift. Well, to be an attempt, at least. Um, but that was in, yeah, certainly looked like it was in a head there. Certainly unusual to see someone just hesitate and pull on a snatch. Right. Uh, you see that sometimes in the clean when the weight becomes heavy enough that you know you're not going to get under it. But right. the snatch, generally the bar is light enough. And you have to have the speed to at least attempt the, the turnover and... and so it's very unusual to see that. Yeah. I mean, in terms of, you know, like her second attempt was a three kilo international record. That would have been a, uh, was it 160? It was 63. That would have been a five kilo personal record. And sometimes just mentally, it's very difficult to get your head around a number that you haven't considered hitting because it's so far beyond what you have done. Yeah, absolutely. So second attempt now for Maris Vizcala, 64 kilos after a, a pretty comfortable opener. Definitely a little more forward than her first attempt. Yes. She, the weight may have corrected that technique on that one. Right. So she was able to, to effectively catch it in the middle of her foot, yep. have her weight balanced properly. Uh, the only fear I would have as a coach is if I see that happening, uh, where the weight is correcting her technique, then a little bit more weight might correct it too much, you know, and uh -huh. you end up with a little bit of a lift that's too forward. Yeah, she did. I mean, just like on that first attempt, she does sweep that bar back off the floor. I'd love to get a... Um, a bit of bar pass tracking on that. And I was going to say slight wobbling, but I mean, it's under heavy load. There's no, certainly no bending and rebending or anything or straightening and rebending of the elbows, just Previously a lot of weight overhead. Oh. And it looks like it was, uh, oh, maybe it was overturned, you know, lift. You know what? I'd be tempted to challenge that. The coaches do have challenge cards at this competition. We haven't seen one yet used. But yeah, that the lift was... It appeared really good. The oh. time has started for Rebecca Copeland, but she just she sat there. She doesn't look like she's getting ready to come out and make a lift in you know, the next 45 seconds or anytime soon. I wonder if she's seeing something that we're not, which is a challenge card being thrown in or... Potentially someone at the score table might be changing, but until the card is thrown. Yeah, she's got to act like it's her attempt. She's now got 30 seconds on the clock. Okay. Change came in just in time, yeah. Okay, so Maris Juskala is retaking 64 kilos. And really, there's not a lot more that she can do to improve that lift. Yeah, it was already pretty good. It's a tough thing to come back as an athlete mentally after mm -hmm. doing a lift you feel is successful. Yeah. You're a little bit demoralized, so you've got to muster up, you know, that same kind of energy you had the first time. Absolutely. I think I'm going to watch the front angle of this rather than our view and just keep an eye on the elbow, which is presumably what you got uh, red lighted for or overturned for on the last one. Oh, uh. what a shame. She caught that high. You know, she had plenty of height, no plenty of power in it. Yeah. Elbows were locked fine. A little bit too much horizontal movement in the turnover, but, uh, yeah, she's still credited with her first, so yeah, she's on the board at least. I mean, sometimes when you catch a lift, you know, not far off that power position, and you have to, you know, she caught that pretty high, and you have to pause there and find balance. It's a lot more difficult than if you just catch it right in the bottom of the snap, yeah. where you can really, you know, rock forward on your foot, or rock back if you need to to save it. Absolutely. If that bar is moving up and down as you catch it, it's much easier to balance. If it's yeah. moving front to back, it's a lot harder to find fixation. But at the end of the day, that is her first international competition. She's got a lift on the board. You know, she's in the game. So not a bad day. So second attempt now for Rebecca Copeland, 65 kilos. 
this uh, will be five kilos over the most she had previously ever hit. Ah. Didn't look yeah. like she set up particularly well at the start there. No. That may have caused that bar to be a little bit forward as she went for the, the finish. Yeah, never got back in front of the bar. You know, yeah, she finished, leant back, pulled under. There was no, you know, the chest never went through, the head never went through. Yeah, no real commitment there at the end. Right. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be the guy who claims that someone's not committed. But I'll be the bad guy. Yeah, you, can, you can do that. You've been around longer than I have. Let's see this replay. Yeah, also the um, the shoulders, they sort of catch and then they internally rotate right as she takes the, the weight of the bar. Yeah, she's just leaving the bar out in front on the pole, so, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has the height, it's got speed, but it's just not going to be in the right place. Yeah. Getting a few words now from the coach. Harry Leach of Ireland. Yeah, I saw you talking to him earlier in the training hall. Yeah, he's a, he's a good coach. Been uh, with Ireland for as long as I can remember. Right. I think we've got Sean Brown as well in the back room for Ireland, who's compete. In fact, we can see him there leaning against the chair. He'll be competing, I think, as an 89 kilo lifter rather than as an 81 kilo lifter. I just had a word with him actually in between these last two sessions. Uh, he says his training's been going well. He's filled out. He's about 87 kilos right now. Snatched 140. He's hit a few 170s in training. Uh, recently moved to. I can't remember exactly where it is. Somewhere in Europe from Ireland, uh, where he now lives, but obviously still working pretty much full-time with Team Ireland. Here's Rebecca coming out for her third and final attempt at 65 kilos. Uh, a huge lift for her if she makes it. She's got to make sure she brings the bar far enough back to get that bar back over her head on the turnover. Wow. Great correction. Yeah, that's a really, great thing. Yeah. Really nice correction on that pull. Good lead to Copeland, I actually treated Ireland. myself to the front angle on that lift just to see what was going on. And uh, yeah, that was impressive. She'll be thrilled. Yeah, coming coming back and making your third after a miss is always a really satisfying feeling. It's yeah. a great way to go into the clean and jerk too. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay, our first Bulgarian athlete now here. Uh, open attempt at 66 kilos from the Desda and the Gaian. Uh, interesting technique. She's, uh, you know, the first yeah. thing she does is she pulls her shoulders back before she sort of starts even pushing with the legs. Yeah, looks like her hips are maybe a little bit high at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And again, just leaving her shoulders in a position still too far over the bar. The bar stays a little too far in front. Right. Interestingly, in the Desda, uh, her last competition, she actually competed, well, it was the European Championships last year. Uh, she competed as a 45 kilo weightlifter uh, and has decided, obviously, to come back up. Though she did snatch 72 kilos at 45, which is... An, an extremely impressive snatch. I don't know if she's, you know, had a tough time training. Maybe it's just the day. Maybe she's, you know, who knows. But certainly a little bit down to be snatching 66 in the heavier weight category. But she's no stranger to competition. I mean, she's competed a lot. Uh, we've got her going back as far as 2014 at the Youth European Championships where she placed six in the, uh, the 44 kilo class, the youth category that we no longer have. She's going to come out and retake that. Hopefully she's shaken off the nerves enough to, to make this second attempt now at 66 kilos. Oh, she's going to have to let that go. And again, just a really forward, forward enough to make a run for it, but right. uh, didn't have the runway on the platform. Nerves of steel from the central referee. He did yeah. not flinch. Uh, nice to have someone also test out the guard at the front of the platform, just make sure that the, well, that it was secure. We Max and I saw everybody drilling everything in today, and I have to say I didn't have the most amount of confidence that that was going to hold the speed with which this place got put up, but uh, certainly at 66 kilos. 
the central referee is safe today. Yeah, just a little bit forward. The same as the first one, uh, just slightly in front. And, you know, you can catch it, and she probably has a few millimeters there, a centimeter or two to, to make the adjustment, but right. you just can't. And a fantastic coach's lean. Yes. Uh, that we just got to see in the replay. But that's two misses now. Uh, the pressure here is on. Looks like she's getting some help from uh, Ivan Ivanov. Right. A little ammonia. He four famously front squatted four times body weight, 210 in the 52 kilo category, uh, which is in the unbelievable document, uh, unbelievable Bulgarians documentary. Bulgaria has a very rich history of very gritty, successful lists. Yeah. So I would expect nothing less than for her to make an all out attempt on this. Right. Oh, ah. what a shame. What a shame. That's our first bomb out no of the championships. Had to happen to someone. And unfortunately it happened to Nadezda. Have you been in a situation as a, well, as an athlete or a coach where you've got an athlete and they're, you know, two attempts, miss, miss. They've got to come back, make that third attempt. Um, and if so, what's that? What's that like? At least at this level, because you've been to obviously the World Championships. You know, as an athlete, I've been there more times than I care to mention. <laughs> <laughs> right. In training, actually, I just miss my working sets, and, yeah. then, and then I decide to end it. So, opening attempt now, 67 kilos for Olga Shapiro. This is her first ever international competition. In fact, I might have that wrong. This might be her second. No, this is, in fact, her first ever competition. Very solid. Yeah, well, really. she's definitely dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's room for more. There's, there's certainly room for more there. A very, very strong opener. Yeah. Very nice bar pass up to the hip, and then it looks like I'd like to see another slow mo. There's a lot of hip contact, but I mean, what a way to open up your international debut. You can see how thrilled she is. Yeah. Wow. Very solid. Yeah. Flicks those wrists just as she fixates the bar overhead. Very nice. There is a change of 70 kilograms on the bar. For We're getting some more back and forth now, right? Mm -hmm. So in the 45 kilo session, we only had one lifter who was able to make uh, a lift with these reds on. 70 kilos. It looks like now we've got uh, a fair few lifters who are going to be coming out and taking all three attempts at something over 70 kilos. Three lifters still to open. Julian Imperio, Maria Jimenez, and uh, and Helena Lomanchiska. We've still got our team of is it eight loaders, or I think we might now have nine. We have a they enormous overabundance of loaders at this competition. We have rows, in fact, of loaders at this point. There's stadium seating for them, <laughs> right? I think at this point they might be outnumbering the spectators. So Olga is still the lifter. There is a change. 70 kilograms for so Shapiro Olga. Looks like what just happened there was someone stole that clock. Ah. So the lifter changed and took her two minute clock. Then that lifter bumped up right. and now Olga is left with a one minute clock. And that, I don't know if that's just a clever move from the other coach, or that might be the inexperience of the Israeli coach. Potentially just a, a event. It right. may have just happened. They forgot to change the weight. So 70 kilos, 3 kilos up from her 67 kilo opener.
That's a great lift. Yeah, again, very yeah. solid. Yeah. That's a great lift. I mean, she is quick. She's aggressive. She pulls nicely off the floor. Yeah. You know, she's one of those lifters where, you know, she deserves every kilo that she gets. She's not leaving a whole lot uh, out there. She moves pretty well. Yeah, all of her movements are great, really concise, mm -hmm. connected. Everything is just crisp. Nice to see as well. The directors are... Uh, the director of the whole media side of this, of taking our advice and they are cutting away, showing us the full lifter just before they start lifting. So to all of you who emailed us and said, make sure that we get that sorted, thank you because that lent weight to our argument when we uh, we tried to convince the director and we told them that we received all of these messages from real weightlifting fans saying that they wanted to see the whole lifter as they lifted, not just the upper body, not just the legs, not just the face. Uh, and so we've been able to sort that. So thanks for sending in that kind of information. Open attempt now for the Spanish Maria Jimenez, 72 kilos. This her second international competition ever. Her best snatch, internationally 73 uh, from the World Championships a few months ago. Solid opener. Yep, solid opener. A few things that she can tweak, Good but lift great lift. Definitely a heavy opener for her. Yeah. Putting herself in a position for Jury's a done. very, very big meet for her today. Mm -hmm. Oh. All right. Technical stop. Yeah, technical stop. Review Jury. the lift. Want to take another look. We're seeing the slow-mo that you're not seeing right now. We're getting a bit of a fast forwarding and rewinding of the lift the previous lift uh, was uh, changed by the jury from good lift to no lift and they've oh. given it a no lift and she can't believe it 72 kilograms so. of the bar second attempt for Jimenez square was Perez Maria Jose Spain pretty strict judging there yeah. it was very difficult to tell if that was a press out it almost looked like they were watching the top of the lift when the lifter lowers the bar mm -hmm potentially lowered it okay. or let go of it before shoulder height but uh, neither one of those calls seemed like they were obvious it's one of those rules you know letting go of the bar or the fact that you're not supposed to let go of the bar until after it passes the shoulder that is so often not enforced in competition that a lot of athletes get out of the habit of of you know maintaining that hold I mean I don't think it's the elbow her left Elbow maybe, you know, rotates a little bit, but it doesn't doesn't look like it bends. Yeah, certainly a, a tough call for us to know. She's oh, oh I think we saw that yeah, right arm. Okay, yeah. That's the angle that gave it away. She's gonna come right out now to seventy two kilos again. She's actually on the bar right now. The camera hasn't cut to her. That is surely yeah. good enough for them. She doesn't look happy. Certainly not she happy. She stared down that right judge. Good lift, Jimenez, Cuervos, Perez. Put a little well, bit of <laughs> force into that bar slam. 73 kilograms of the Surely they're going to give her that lift. You know what? Even if she had pressed out, I think I'd be too nervous at this point to give her a red light. <laughs> it's, it's one strategy that works. Yeah. Apparently. Intimidate the judges, but... No, that, that was a fantastic lift. And, yeah. and in fact, that was a much more solid lift, much more comfortable, far less work involved in saving that than her opener. So she'll be frustrated, but two lifts down, two lifts essentially made. It's a smart call, especially, you know, you're in that position. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you could miss a second and then you're staring down, you know, bomb out. Right. So here's Olga Shapiro with her third and final attempt. Um, interested to see how this goes her, her second attempt was a wonderful lift but it didn't look like there was there were many kilos left if she's able to make this it'll be quite a spectacle and again this her first international competition Wow. I mean, she's gutsy. She really committed to that. Yeah, it looks no like right above her knee, she really got behind the bar and was yeah. a little bit too aggressive too early. Mm -hmm. Had that 
barbell swing way too far around. Right. And again, it wasn't one of those misses behind where the elbows or the arms never straighten and you know, mm. you're know you sort of just jumping through it. There was, you could see it, you could almost feel it, there was a lockout at one point during that lift, which is always upsetting as a lifter to know that you know the bar was there, it was locked out, it was, you know, it was moving backwards. As Max said, there was some technical uh, stuff there that, that swung the bar back behind her, but there's a, there's a photo there that could have been taken that makes it look like a made lift. Yeah, always, always bitter to, to have to walk away after something that you feel like you were close to. Mm -hmm. But she should be pleased. 70 kilos on her second attempt. She looks happy. Her yep. first international competition. That sets her up in a, in a good way for the clean and jerks. Looks like she may have had a, a torn hand callus, maybe some blood on the yeah. bar. They're, they're cleaning it off right now. Yeah, she went straight over to the medical table. Uh... Doesn't look, didn't look at all injured, but she went straight over to it, maybe just to, you know, clean her hand or something like that. But they're now taking a look at the bar. Buys a little bit of time as well for Maria Jimenez from Spain, who's going to come out with her third attempt at 74 kilos. It looks like a two kilo jump for her. Again, she looks a little bit angry that they turned down that first lift, but we'll see what she does here. Her last competition, the 2021 IWF World Championships, she snatched 73 kilos. So this will be a one kilo international competition for her. She placed ninth at that competition. She's 11 days my younger, actually, looking at her date of birth. 74 kilos on the bar. Third and final attempt for Maria Jimenez. I have a feeling if we were to have watched the front angle, we may have seen a wobbly right elbow. No? Okay. Two lights. Oh, it looks like the jury have put up their flag. I think they're going to take a look. Jury stop, yeah. Yeah. From our angle, we're sort of 30 degrees over to, if you were all watching front on, we're over to the right-hand side. We don't have a good view of her right elbow, but I think there was just enough. In fact, they're showing a replay now. There's definitely, in my opinion, a press out on her right arm on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, According to the jury's decision, the previous lift that was changed from good lift to no lift. Yeah, it's a no lift. And yeah, jury, that's a tough, that's a tough situation. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like that's a feature of her lifting. It wasn't a one-off. I mean, for that to happen two times out of three lifts, what do you do as a coach, Max, to you know, to improve that lockout? That's a tough scenario. A lot of times, what you have to do is really adhere to a certain standard, right? If mm -hmm. if the standard of quality at the meets is this high, your training has to replicate that. So you know, go back to the drawing board and see what you're doing in training that's that's leading you here. Yeah. Opening attempt now for the Ukrainian, Annalena Lomachinska, 75 kilos. Very fast under. Looks like she cut the pull on that a little bit. Right. But, I mean, Great. it's a good, surely it's a good lift. They've taken a while good to, she got given a red, but it's two whites, it's a good lift. Stop. No, the jury has stopped stop again. again. I want to take a look from that front angle. From this angle, it's fine. I mean, okay. Yeah, her right arm certainly rotates. If it, whether or not it actually Rebends and straightens. I don't know. According to the jury's decision, the previous lift uh, was changed from good lift to no wow. lift. Wow, it's a no lift. They're going to give her a no the lift. Jury, the That's a tough one. Yeah. That's very tough. But you know what? I, I, I have my issues with. I don't have my issues with the press out rule. There are three clauses actually to do with the press out rule if you look in the regulations. Two of them I'm actually more than happy with. There's one part that, that, that I'm not so keen on. But in this situation, I don't mind it when the judges are being particularly strict. It's more when they're not consistent. And as long as they're consistent, right. which they seem to be, then you know, if it's a problem for one person, it's a problem for everyone, which means it's not unfair. Yeah, um, exactly. So as long as they maintain the standard, that's okay. Jury is still waving the flag. Well, you've all also got to consider the situation yeah, now. The, 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 the oh, they're in the challenge card oh, first okay. of the competition. 
I guess they're going to have to re-look at it. I mean, it's, it's a weird rule where the jury stop the lift because they think they see something. They then review it and they say, yeah, we still think we see something. Yeah. And then you say, can you check again? The chances of them then looking again and saying, yeah, we were wrong those two times is so slim. I mean, I think it's... We're seeing the replay. It's a tough call. It's certainly a call I would justify a challenge on. Yeah. Uh, you know, as your opener, you, you want to make sure you're on the board. If this challenge gets uh, gets them the lift, it would uh -huh. be worth it because you have two more chances now to, to increase your total. Right. Uh, I mean, otherwise, taking that loss and having to remake it, you know, make that up again with as strict a judging as there is here, Yeah. that can be a challenge. The other thing you have to think about as other lifters is everyone might want to reevaluate what they're going to do. Right. They might drop their numbers down just a tiny bit to make sure they're safe. And this has a knock-on effect. I mean, there's a delay now of several minutes. Athletes who thought they were coming out, now maybe they've got to wait longer. They've got to take another attempt. I could see one of the jury reviewing it, w gesturing with his hand, sort of rotating. He seemed to think it was a rotation of the arm. It's a wow. good lift. They've turned it over. I don't think I've seen that before. I think that's happened only once yeah. internationally because I remember it being something that we mentioned. It was the first time it ever happened. So that's a great use of a challenge card. Wink to the camera from Annalena. And she gets the lift. Fantastic snatch, 75 kilos. Yeah, well played challenge card too. Yeah. Really worth fighting for on that for right. sure. And it looks now like we're going to take a two kilo jump for the last lifter to open, uh, the Italian Giulia Imperio, who actually Max and I saw in the training hall today. That's right, in the training hall. <laughs> um, <laughs> training. Not really training, but, you know, she was. I think she was doing some extremely light snatches when we first went in, and then by the time we left, some sort of core workout, was it sit-ups or Russian yeah. twists or something like that? Probably just getting her body warmed up, loose, take some of the nerves off. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like maybe we're seeing some games here. Julia's bumped up to 78. That's going to bring Annalena straight back out. But considering all the stoppage that just went on in the overturning, it's not really like Annalena Lomachinska is going to feel rushed. She's just had four minutes. And she's going to follow herself now, 77 kilos. Definitely has to turn. have a short memory here of what just happened and focus on making this lift. Right. And this, if she makes it, is uh, three kilos more than she's ever made. Wow. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. A little correction in the bottom position. Regained a balance. But still a red very light. fast. I think what I see on her lift is that her shoulders rotate and the arm turns, yeah. the elbow turns, but I don't see an, an, an unlocking. Right. Hopefully this front view will actually clarify some of that for us. There we go. Particularly her right. Suddenly as she stands up, yeah. just as she starts to push with the legs, the shoulders just internally rotate, which, I mean, it's just how it is. You always see with weightlifters, if they catch that bar in this extremely externally rotated position, yeah. you see it there. Um, the lockout always looks good. As soon as lifters, and it tends to be the more muscle-bound lifters, I think a good example is someone like Ilya Ilian. Uh, that was a bit of a odd call in 2014. A few people thought they missed it, a few people thought they hadn't, but I think it's that only internally rotated position is difficult to judge sometimes with the elbow. So it looks like Julia's going to be coming out for her open attempt. She's bumped up another kilo now to 79 kilos, uh, which is three kilos under her best. She snatched 82 kilos at the European Junior Championships, but that was some seven months ago, maybe even eight. It was September last year. She has such precise lifting technique. Right. And if you want to talk about a good lockout, we're about to see it with this opening attempt. <laughs> uh, and she missed it. I mean, it happens. 
Yeah, a little, little bit too strong on that one. Yeah. She has, you know, a few times in competition, not ended up with a snatch. Right, the inconsistency problem here may be, a, may be an issue. This may, this may come up, you know, mm -hmm. missing your opener when you're in the, in the lead right. is definitely not a strong, <laughs> strong position to be in. You know, maybe we should tell her that, you know, training before you compete the same day is not... <laughs> Not the technique. Maybe if she'd not turned up to the gym early and done all those workouts. <laughs> I'd have a feeling it wasn't an abdominal problem there. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But you, I mean, even in that lock, uh, that replay, you can see the lockout is strong. But um, she, you could even see her coach there giving her advice. Looked like she was just swinging it, use her hips too much, and, and launch that bar behind. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the situations too where you come out and you're just really ready to go. You're strong. You have adrenaline. And suddenly, you know, that extra power just doesn't translate the same way with your technique. Right. A little bit too much, one way or the other, and then you, you've got to miss. Yeah. She's going to come back out now, and it would be surprising if she didn't eventually make this. I mean, she has snatched as much as 85 kilos. She did that at the Junior World Championships uh, 2021. She snatched over 80 kilos at her last three competitions. So this 79-second attempt put her into the lead should be well within her capabilities. That's a good lift. Yeah. Sigh of relief there. Yeah. Yeah, she'll be she'll be pleased. I mean it's one of those competitions where when you are the favorite and everybody thinks that you should have a few kilos and everyone else, there's this extra added layer of pressure where it's not only yours to win, it's yours to lose. Yeah. And that's a horrible feeling to have where you know that you know it really comes down to what you're able to do and what you let yourself do. Very, very solid, just exceptional. Yeah. So we have two lifts remaining. Annalena Lobachinska has her third attempt. She's going to go in at 80 kilos. And then no doubt Julia is going to take, you know, whether it's a kilo more, whether it's 81, whether she makes a, a more realistic jump, who knows. But she's going to do something that's going to put her into the lead or further into the lead. Lobachinska knows what this attempt will do. If she makes this, it puts a lot of pressure on... Uh, mm -hmm. On her Julia. competition, yeah. yeah, she's going to be in a position if she does, uh, you know, and then the question becomes: Does uh, does the competition take a kilo jump, or is she confident enough to go more? Right. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if if Julia takes larger jumps just because she is capable of it. She's done it in competition previously, but sometimes the most important thing, especially when you know you're you've got the bigger of the two cleaner jerks, is just to take the one kilo jump. 80 kilo final attempt for Lomachinska. Oh, that's very brilliant. solid. That was great. Yeah. Wow. And I have Pressure to say, lift. that looked a world different from her opener. You know, she didn't cut her yeah. pull like she did in her opener. That was, you know, from start to finish, that was perfection. She found her groove by the third one. That wow. was perfect. Maybe she played a trick on everyone. She purposefully, you know, she left out in front of the first. She planned on throwing in the uh, the challenge card. It would, it would be an elaborate an elaborate ruse. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say there have been f more elaborate ruses in weightlifting than that. <laughs> a sport known for its ruses. <laughs> well, so it looks like Julia is taking the 81, yeah. going for the win here. The smart call. She looks focused. She's walking up very quickly to the platform. She's going to chalk up and then uh, and then come out for this. Skips the chalk. Yeah. Incredibly narrow grip. This for the lead and the gold medal in the left. And wow. You know, I Perhaps said it the other day. Like, you know, sometimes there's nothing more exciting than an upset. Yeah. Well, that 80, that 80 uh, was a great call, and, and the fact that her second attempt was successful really pushed uh, yeah. Imperio to, to take a number she couldn't make. Yeah, and maybe, maybe it's not the weight even as much as the pressure, right? Being put in a position where 
you know a certain lift means something, uh, you know. Yeah, it's absolutely. tough. It's challenging. Small errors, they they add up. Yeah, we actually uh, were able to have a chat with Julia um, about some of her training. She says that the last few months have been extremely intense. Um, training's been tough. I mean, we we've, we've spoken to a few of the Italians recently to try and find out what it is that they're doing that's good and getting them so good. I mean, they really are arguably the country to beat in European weightlifting right now. Uh, she said that they've been training as much as three workouts a day for a few weeks in a row, which is, I mean, I, I have done that for a couple of weeks at a time. In fact, I've done that for one two-week period of my life, and it was one <laughs> of the most hideous weeks of my life. Max, you've certainly done that for quite a long time. For those who don't know, Max trained sort of a Bulgarian style multiple times a day. You know better than anyone how difficult it is to train with that level of frequency to the intensity that the Italians train. Yeah, it's extremely taxing. It's it's uh, It can be a double-edged sword. You can have a situation where you're training so hard, putting up incredible results, but as you do more and more of that, you risk you know getting injured or you potentially risk you know, just, just putting yourself in a position where at the meet you can't be successful because you've exhausted yourself. Right. Yeah. It didn't look like she was particularly tired. It uh, didn't look like she was particularly off. Just mm -hmm. couldn't quite get the lift technique to, to come around the way she wanted. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we asked her a little bit about her, her favorite lifts recently in training. Uh, she didn't mention a snatch. She didn't mention a jerk, a total, or anything like that. She did mention the fact that she cleaned 105 kilos, which uh, is four kilos more than her junior European record. It'll be interesting to see if anyone's able to match in the clean and jerk, but with the uh, the speed and precision from Annalena Lomachinska uh, on that 80 kilo snatch, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see a bit of an upset here. Do we have much data on the, the clean and jerks from Lomachinska? Let's take Looks a look. Like Lomachinska's best clean and jerk is about 89 kilos. So What does it say her best? Well, it says that her best snatch is 74, so she's definitely... She's improved dramatically on that. Yeah. Uh, we've seen, well, essentially a 10% increase in her snatch to go from 74 to 80. If we see a further 10% increase in a clean jerk from 89, we're going to be looking about 98 kilos. So This could be an upset. This it could, could be, be an uh, upset. She's got, a, she's got a kilo on yeah. on her in the snatch. And if she's in the mid to high 90s uh, and it's a, it's a fight, this yeah. could go down a different way than we expect. Yeah, absolutely. So they're having a quick sweep of the platform, uh, rolling the bar off and on, just making sure everything is, is ready for the, the clean drop portion. We've got a 10 minute break down to the final seven minutes now, and then the athletes will come straight back out. Now tomorrow, I think we have three sessions for the day. Uh, I think two times this happens. Normally it's just two sessions. Tomorrow and then later on in the competition, I believe it's a penultimate day, there are three A sessions. We'll have the first two men's sessions, the men's 55 A session, the men's 61 A session, uh, separated by the women's 55 kilo A session. Of course, we're also bringing you the B sessions. Uh, we won't have commentary on them, but they will also be available live and on demand. We may be able to sort commentary. Uh, but we can't guarantee it. We will be having commentary on every single A session and 75 hours of elite weightlifting, the best of European weightlifting, will be brought to you live and on demand throughout the next eight days. Now, this category really is, I would say, a category that's owned by the Asian continent. Uh, world records held by... Uh, well, the, all of the youth records are held by uh, Windy Azaya uh, from Indonesia. And then there are several Chinese weightlifters who hold world records in this category. Hu Zi Hui, uh, the Chinese weightlifter, holds the snatch world record at 96 kilos. Uh, and then Chinese Saikon Mirabai from India holds the clean and jerk world record at 119 kilos. Jiang Kui Hua from China holds all of the junior world records. There are no European weightlifters uh, in this category holding any senior records, but that tends to be the case at the moment, you know, in this period of time, uh, these lighter weight categories certainly dominated by, by Asian lifters. Yeah, absolutely. Five minutes now on the clock. 
It'll be interesting to see what changes the precedence that's been set here by that challenge card, uh, how they manifest themselves in this clean and jerk. Uh, it seemed like there was a lot of really strict jury calls, a lot of strict judging. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that it's been overturned, it seemed like they may have backed down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, which could be really a big benefit for a lot of these lifters. Yeah, I mean, the, the ideal situation here, I suppose, would be if you're the, the coach and you see your lifter miss and you can see that it was, or you see your lifter make a lift, it gets turned down, and you can see why it was a miss, Best to leave the challenge card because the chances of changing the mind of the jury at that point are extremely low. If it's the third attempt and it's there for a medal or it's the third attempt that's there to improve your placing uh, and you really think that there's uh, a good reason as to why that lift should have been a lift, that's probably the time where you want to play that challenge card. But I think the challenge cards were brought in in, I want to say... Uh, was it the Continental Championships in 2021? Has it just been the last 13, 14 months? No, I think it's been around a little bit longer than that. When you were at the... We, we were together at the 2019 World Championships. It wasn't around then in Thailand, right? No, I believe we had challenge cards then. Really? Yeah, I think the challenge cards came a few years back. Uh, I, I can't for the life of me remember exactly when they were implemented. But uh, I do know they were... They've been around for several several years now. Oh, interesting. I wonder if Dan can actually look that up for us. Dan, can you take a look? Oh, he can't hear us right now. Do you want to give him a nudge? See if we can work that one out. Can you find out for us how long the... Um, you, can, you can hear me okay? Can you find out when the challenge card came into existence? Came into the sport. Yeah, I can find out. Yeah, it would be interesting to see. And I, as far as I can tell, this actually was the second time that this challenge card has been successfully used. Uh, a lot of coaches throwing them in, a lot of uh, no's from the jury, but this time certainly it's worked. So, okay, so Max was right, it was yeah. 2019. That World Championships was the first time that it was used. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't used successfully, but it was used. But there have been competitions since where international competitions, uh, continental championships, in fact, where they've decided not to include the challenge card for some reason. Yeah, that's very true. And a lot of national level meets in a lot of countries don't implement them or right. only only for A sessions. And I think that's just a time constraint. Yeah. We don't want people challenging every lift. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Yeah, and it certainly can be used, uh, I guess, in a way that doesn't seem particularly fair, where you could pretty much just use it as a way to... You can weaponize time. it. You could weaponize it. You could buy <laughs> yourself some more time. You could, you know, there's a knock-on effect. You could delay the, the attempts of, of another lifter that you're trying to beat. If someone's already taken four minutes to rest, right. chuck in a challenge card, there goes another four minutes. The athlete gets cold. I like to think that that doesn't get used for, for that sort of situation, but, you know, if it can be used, eventually it will be used. Um... And, and maybe it's fair enough that it's used. If it's in the rules and you can do it, then... Well, you know, with great power it. comes great responsibility, Seb. <laughs> and in my uh, situation, with no power comes no responsibility. So enjoy this, uh, this live commentary. <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment, we had two lifters went three for three. Uh, one of which, obviously the gold medalist in the snatch, Annalena Lomachinska, the other, Dahana Mayer, the first lifter to come out. Uh, we had one bomb out and then uh, a sprinkling of, of reds and whites. In first place at this point, Annalena Lomachinska, silver medalist, of course, uh, Julia Imperio. In third place with 72 kilos, so I'd say a fair, fair way down is Maria Jimenez. Uh, she's going to have to battle it out to maintain that bronze. 70 kilo snatch by Olga Shapiro. She'll be fighting for the bronze medal. But it looks like really the battle for gold, and certainly the, the gold and silver, is going to be between the Ukrainian and the Italian. There's just one, uh, two kilos in it at this point. One well, kilo in it, sorry. Yeah. Lomachenska is opening uh, a kilo above her international best. Yeah, she's put in 90 kilos there. Julia has put in 94 kilos, which seems, if anything, uh, a conservative opener for her. So 
It'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, we're going to have to have seen quite a big improvement from Annalena Lomachinska to maintain that lead. It may be that she ends up, you know, she, she gets the gold medal in the snatch and that's it. But, you know, this sport is full of upsets, so you just never know. Yeah, well, it really comes down to making lifts. I mean, as obvious as, as, as it is. Right. 65 kilos there by Maris Driscala from Luxembourg. And the opening attempt now, Rebecca Copeland, 72 kilos. Yeah. Very comfortable opener. That lockout looks absolutely fine for her. Just three kilos below her international best from 2019. She's pretty happy with that too. Yeah. First total at your first European Championships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is a significantly bigger competition than the international Naeem Sulemanolu tournament from 2019 where she previously competed. Uh, in terms of the old qualification system for the Olympics, and by old, I mean the, literally just this last quad that built up to the Tokyo Olympics. That was a bronze tier. Something like this would be a gold tier event. We don't have those tiered levels anymore for this next qualification period for the Olympics, but uh, comparatively, this is a far more important competition. Here's 73 for Concordia's opening attempt. And she doesn't go under it. You have to assume that that's injury-related, more so than psychological, because it's very rare that an opening attempt can get in your head like that. Yeah, that's a surprise. That's a, a, a big surprise. does not look like uh, there was any kind of injury walking off or anything, no, like a hamstring. Or she's not clutching anything. Yeah. The doctor has walked off with her. So maybe they're going to check something out. But in the meantime, Tiana Mayer from Croatia is going to take her opening attempt. She went three for three in the snatch. Seventy-three for her is probably a pretty typical opening weight. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit heavy, but uh, definitely within range. Wow. Bounced out of that yeah. split position. <laughs> very, very <laughs> solid. You don't see that very often. It was a, an assertive jerk to, to open that. Yeah. I mean, I think as quickly as she split, she recovered. The clean did look like she maybe left it a little bit forward. Mm -hmm. It wasn't super close to her body on the, on the final extension there. So we'll see how that plays out with a little bit heavier weights. Yeah. Looks like Concordia Butnari, the Moldovian who didn't go under that opening attempt, is now currently lying on her back, feet elevated onto the chair. Yeah, potentially a back issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw uh, Lu Jin doing something similar back in 2019. Uh, the difference there being that he then came out and set a new world record. I'm not quite sure we're going to see that <laughs> on this next attempt, but you never know. Oh, she's know. on her feet again. Looks like she's coming out. going to be 73 kilos rather than the 120 kilo world record but she is coming out let's see if she's able to to force herself under this one she doesn't look entirely confident <laughs> and it's just not happening i'd be yeah, you know, I think she's definitely in pain here. Yeah. I, she gestured to the coach. There was a wave of the hand. It looks like she's not going to be coming out for that third attempt. Yeah. And you know what? In this sort of situation, you just start thinking about the well-being of the athlete. Absolutely. You know, we don't want to see anyone injured. You know, she's only uh, 22 years of age. She's got a whole career ahead of her. The last thing we want is either for her to get hurt uh, or for her to, you know, lose further confidence and, and have a harder time coming back. I mean, the mental aspect Absolutely. of this game is is enormous. Yeah, there's a wince, and then as she walked off, it looked like, you know, 
it looked like something just gave. Her knees buckled ever so slightly as she walked away off the platform. Yeah, had a little trouble staying straight up as she walked, too. Could, could certainly be a back issue. It's hard to know. She's still sat there. I mean, it looks like the coaches want her to go out. She would normally have returned to her platform. She'd be, you know, unlacing her shoes. She'd be pulling her knee sleeves down. But instead, they're just, you know, rubbing her head with what seems like ice. Maybe to just wake her up, snap her out of whatever it is that's preventing her from going under. She's got a minute four on the clock. If she does come out for this, it'll be amazing. I think the only time I've seen someone miss like this and then come back and make the weight was at the 2021 Asian Championships uh, in the women's 87 kilo category. Uh, a spectacular, I think it was 150 kilos. Uh, made a lift on the third attempt after two misses just like this. That's but extremely hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's from a, uh, a top 10 Sinclair weightlifter ever. So those sorts of lifters are you know, made of something pretty incredible. Certainly has the crowd behind her here. Yeah, she's got a lot of support. Everybody's cheering from the media to the spectators. Let's see what she can do. 73 kilos, her third and final attempt to get a total. She's, wow, I mean... A valiant attempt, yeah, nonetheless. Uh, the fact that she made herself go under that, she deserves uh, a lot of recognition from everyone for, for you know, her mental toughness to get under that. That is not easy to do. No doubt she'll be disappointed, but, you know. Yeah, really, that's a really challenging position to be put in. Mm -hmm. As a coach, as an athlete... Uh, you know, your first attempt starts off like that, yeah. and then to, to figure out what's going on. You know, obviously the athlete and the coach have an intimate understanding of any injuries or anything like that. So that situation, you know, I'm sure they both use their best judgment there. But uh, it's very challenging. I mean, uh, no one wants to be put in that place. Yeah, absolutely. Also, for those wondering of the athletes I was talking about who uh, previously did this at the Asian Championships, it was Kang Yue from China. Um, who has the eighth highest Sinclair uh, of any female weightlifter ever. That was back in 2014 as a 75. She went 131, 160. But she returned to competition after a bit of time off. Uh, miss, miss, make. It was an incredible session. But back to the 49s. We have Rebecca Copeland from Ireland coming out for her second attempt at 75 kilos. She had a successful opener of 72. This would tie her best from... Her last international meet. Right, give her a 140 kilo total. A little hot back, but it's certainly comfortable. She has a lot of strength. She's explosive and she's driving the bar in great places. Or she's got a lot of power, but some of her energy is misdirected. That that jerk is going a little forward, obviously. Right. Uh, and on the clean, it looks like she's not quite getting a full extension there. So the top of the pull isn't as powerful as it could be. Right. But she's making do with it. Yeah. Yeah, very straight back leg uh, in the jerk. But, you know, a made lift is a made lift. She's currently four for five attempts, one remaining. Certainly um, looks happy with herself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Having a good time. Yeah, it's an interesting turnover. I can't quite uh, put my finger on it, but probably like you said, she's just losing a bit of power there. A lot of height off the shoulders. A change, 77 yep. kilograms on the bar. Second attempt for Mayer Tihana, Croatia. Tihana Mayer from Croatia coming up for her second attempt, 77 kilos. She made 73 on her opener. And uh, if she makes this, that will be five for five. Have we had a six or six? In our last 45s, we saw one person went three for three in the snatch, but that was it. So she might be the first of the competition if she pulls these next two lifts off. She's waited a significant time before this lift. Okay. Mm -hmm. Certainly a press out. 
Yeah. No lift for my aggression. The center judge thought it would look good, but. The weight on the bar remains the same. 77 kilograms. Yeah, I think we had this conversation. I can't remember now if it was this session or the last. Uh, the difference between people who catch the weight in the clean of the snatch with vertical shins and those who don't. There's a little bit more of a margin for error when you don't. And she's very vertical shin yeah, in absolutely. the catch. Uh, it's very easy to get spat out the back when you're in that sort of situation or lose the bar forward. Yeah, it's just a... I mean, Look. what is that? Did she she lock out and then as she brought her back foot forward because she brings it back so soon, yeah. she just loses the lock and then when it lands, it locks again. But It certainly makes sense. You know, you're talking about the snatch being balanced at the bottom, catching it as deep as, as necessary. You know, in the jerk, not being stable before you recover is one of the those ways you see lifters essentially miss after a successful lift. Right. They haven't stabilized, they're not ready to recover, weight might be slightly forward or back, and then they take that step and lose it. Sounds or feels like a personal attack, Max. <laughs> 77 kilo, third attempt. Very different bottom position there to the last attempt. Oh, much Surely better that's jerk. it, yeah. I'd be shocked if she didn't get that. Good lift, my yeah, very nice. Five for five, five for six, sorry. The dream of the six for six is, it's not over forever, but it's over for now. We have one other athlete in this category who could pull it off. Though a lot stands in the way at this point. Uh, Rebecca Copeland from Ireland is going to come out next for her third and final attempt, 78 kilos. Copeland, Ireland on platform. And this would be definitely a personal record total and clean and jerk for sure. Right. Overall, successful looking lift. Yeah. Good lift. Yeah, good really good. good. Yeah, that, yeah it's, inter it's an interesting technique. I mean, the back is, you know, not the most extended I've ever seen when she starts to pull from the floor. I think, at least from this angle, the knees look like they jump in when she dips and drives in the jerk, but it works. A lot works. of power. Yeah, three for yeah. three in a clean jerk, 78 kilos. She's clearly thrilled with that. Next, it looks like we have the Bulgarian coming out. Nadezda Gayan, who um, last year at the European Championships actually competed in the 45 kilo category and won. She is a European champion. She's now fancying her chances in the heavier 49 kilo category. So far, she's uh, she's struggled. Missed all three snatch attempts at 66 kilos, but there are medals for the individual lifts here, and so going to see if she's in for a chance at one of those. It's a strong clean. And solid jerk. Yep. Made that. Yeah, solid jerk. Extremely extended back position in the uh, in the dip and drive. As she stands there, she really yeah really hyper extended. The lumber. Yeah, yeah. So next out will be the opening attempt for Olga Shapiro, who, you know, for the fact that she'd never competed internationally from since uh, well until now has done a fantastic job so far. She missed her third attempt at 73 in the snatch, but she made 70 very nicely. We 
really taking the time here. Based on this opener, she's definitely a stronger snatcher. Mm -hmm. Very Solid strong clean. Clean. Wow. That is an incredible jerk. Really deep, really wide split there. Wow. And then she's relatively tall for this class, my, my assumption here. Uh, you know, she's, she's got a long limbs, so getting, getting a bar overhead like that into that position, you know, it's not the, it's not the easiest when you have long arms and legs like that. So really right. solid to, to maximize her technique to take advantage of that. I mean, the difference there between the clean, I mean, the clean looked so effortless. The jerk was spectacular, but it's certainly not as easy as the, as the clean was. Eighty-one kilos for Mara, just Carla from Luxembourg. She had a tough time in the snatch, making an opener at sixty-two. That is a tough clean there. Looks like she's fighting to. She's. She might have to let go of this. Regained her composure. Wow! Amazing. Wow! Yeah. That was impressive. Wow! I mean, that, that is, is. Yeah, that is something else. Extremely difficult yeah, to she's do. Getting a few rounds of applause to make that lift. Yeah, incredible. Stop. Right, here we go. Jury are calling for a stop. We've got a slow-mo on our screen on the right. Let's see what happens. She waits there for a long time. They can fast forward through this bit, and they do. Yeah, I mean, I see what they see. It's it's her right elbow, I think, isn't it? Our left. Yeah, on potentially a late lockout there. It's hard to say. Unfortunately, I think she's going to get that taken away from her. Yeah. yeah. God, a tough day going from uh, hard to worse. That's one make out of four lifts so far. Being forced to come out after, you know, a clean that was as tough as that. You just got a two minute clock is not an easy feat. Well, you're in a, a tough position now as a coach, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to make the choice. You don't want to waste attempts. No. Uh, but at the same time, you know, was that something that was a fluke? And, and you know, as a coach, you're watching your athlete. You've seen this, this, this number go up in the gym many, many times before. So right. you have to gauge that against what you just saw. You know, is that something that you think for sure she can, she can take the little more aggressive jump to try and build her total? Or do you have to be conservative here and repeat? I mean, I can imagine that the lightheadedness of the press up might be a fluke, but right. the, the, the stand in the clean was tough. Exactly. I think sticking with this weight is, looks like it's what they're going to do, and yeah. it certainly feels like the right thing to do. It's certainly the smartest move. Right. She's six in the snatch. Yeah, it's a tough, uh, tough clean. Looks like she's struggling again. I mean, I was tell you what, she's, she's got something that is just incredible. I mean, to be able to come and make these lifts. Just grit. Yeah. That clean was, was really a little bit awkward. She almost, she basically tried to power it. Yeah. Caught it and very forward. Yeah, that caught, just pushed, pushed her off her balance really badly. 
But uh, to come back and make that, she is <laughs> she's a fighter by all all counts. Yeah. I mean, interestingly, she she stood it up faster than she stood up the last clean, despite you know her heels were two inches off the floor as she stood that up. Yeah. And then somehow she she finds it in her to you know basically reoxygenate. It looks like she's you know for the first half while she's standing, it looks like she's going to pass out, and then she reclaims it. Really put that bar way in front of her head too, but was was able to lock it out properly and then you know get under the bar before she lost balance. And Very it's not impressive. what we expected because, you know, at the start of this, we talked about the fact that this was her first ever international competition. We thought, you know, maybe she'll take it easy. Maybe she'll, you know, uh, just play to go six to six, build some confidence. But they have been ultra aggressive with her attempt selection so far. Yeah. So here comes last year's 45 kilo European champion from Bulgaria. And uh, Nadezda's got 83 kilos on the bar after a successful 80 kilo opener. She won't place because she missed her snatches. But she can still push to a heavy clean jerk. Very solid clean. Moving for a very wide grip on the jerk. And she gets a few down signals from the center referee before she agrees and lowers the bar. And a good lift. That wide grip, that readjustment to a much wider grip is a, definitely a thing the Bulgarians had tried and pushed you know, back in the 90s even. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, really trying to, to make use of that. Not every coach, but certainly something that was occurring there. So it's interesting to see that, that uh, that's still there. She's really trying to make most use of as wide a grip as she can. Mm -hmm. Presumably the theory there being the wider the grip, the, the less distance the barbell has to travel. Right. The only downside is there's less margin for error. Right. The bar can't move forward or back as much. And here we go. Olga Shapiro is coming out for her second attempt, 83 kilos. If she makes this, she extends her lead from 150 to 153. There are plenty of attempts remaining. Three lifters still to come out. Now, speaking of wider grip, she is basically the polar opposite of the previous lifter. Very narrow grip in the clean, and then maintains that in the jerk. Nice clean, not quite as fast as her last. Let's see if the splits is impressive. It's, a, I mean, it, it's a miss, but it's an amazing position that she gets yeah. herself into. The really the went for it. Yeah, the speed that she has to move her feet at to get there. And the, the, the mobility to be able to just lock out and hold that overhead, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's gutsy to move like that. Right. To get under a bar that big, feet that wide, and she was there. She was close. It reminds me of the 75-kilo Bulgarian weightlifter from Unbelievable Bulgarians. I want to say it was Petrov. Uh, he Mikhail used to Petrov. Jerk, yeah, he used to jerk just like that. Yeah. Incredibly fast, violent split. And he would just, you know, there's barely any bend in the back knee. It's just all length. Yeah, really having to get deep to make an accommodation for not getting the bar quite high enough. Right. The issue is, as spectacular as it looks, it's always going to be the limiting factor for her in the cleaner jump because the cleans look so good. Final attempt now for Mara Strzokala from Luxembourg, her first ever international competition. 62 in the snatch, 81 in the clean and jerk. That's her final attempt to get another couple of kilos, bump her up to 145 kilos in the total. Much, much better clean. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna think they're gonna wanna take a look at her left elbow there. Potentially press that on that left yeah. side. Yeah, jury stop. Yeah, she got the two whites. You know, the judges gave a good lift, but the jury uh, not agreeing with the judges. You've got to wonder why there's such a, a difference between what the jury and the judges are saying, the referees. I mean, they're, they're getting pretty much the same angle. 
When we have team, we have an interesting system. We have three judges that are in the best possible viewing position to judge the lifts. Right. And then we place three jury members behind them. All from the same angle. From the same angle. Yeah. Now they're obviously... Of I mean, if you're in this situation, do you just throw in the challenge card because what the heck, it's your last lift, you've got the yeah. remaining, see what you can do, or do you just let it be and let the rest of the competitors, you know, do what they need to do? As a coach, it's one of those decisions you make, you decide, they, they've thrown the card, it looks like. Uh, I think I think you have to go to bat for your athlete. Right. I mean, Every right now, the, the time is on for Olga Shapiro. Okay, no, the stop just come in finally. Challenge card for Strikala Mara. Stop the competition. Really interested to see what happens with this. Will they give Strikala the lift? Here we go. Here's the dip and drive. Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be tough to yeah. overturn. Max and I are, you know, 15 yards from the judges right now and they seem pretty confident with what they said there's not a lot of deliberation going the message is now being passed back to the back room i'm assuming that the message Charles is refused, uh, yeah yeah as the voice had just said the announcer the uh the challenge card was refused so Un unfortunate uh outcome there because that was actually one of her strongest you know cleanest looking lifts well it was the cleanest clean for sure um and it was the, the least amount of time she's had to wait around before making that jerk attempt. Here's Olga Shapiro's third and final attempt, 83 kilos. She does still sit in the, uh, in the lead. This will bump her up by another three kilos. No doubt she'll make the clean look as easy as she has done the last two. It's whether she's able to maintain balance, basically. She's, she's quick as a feet in the jerk. She's quick to get under and lock out. It's just whether she can hold it in such a deep position. If she can get it a little bit higher, she'll be successful. Mm -hmm. Easy climb. I mean, just such a good clean. Better than her second attempt. That's amazing. Wow. That's amazing. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah, she is yeah. extremely athletic to be able to make that. She's so pleased. Yeah. I mean, she steps out so far that not only is her knee behind her heel, it's it's inches behind her yeah. heel. I mean, she's almost got a straight front leg. Yeah, her, her front foot is so far out there. That is unbelievable. I mean, I, I have to wonder, though, with a clean that looks as easy as that, do the coaches think about putting some work into that jerk? Because as spectacular as it is, right now it's not the strongest of her lifts. It's definitely a limiting factor for her. Or maybe, you know, everyone has a limiting factor. Maybe we, at some point you just got to accept it. So here's Bulgarian coming out for their third and final attempt. She's certainly not in shape. Modesta has cleaned... Uh, clean and jerk significantly more than this. 91 kilos in the same category uh, two and a half years ago at the European Junior Championships. 91 kilos. It's a tough clean, but it's so strong. Make the adjustment with her hands. I mean, it's gritty, but I think it's a good lift. Looks to be a good lift. Good lift even even Ov looks uh, in dismay in the back, but. <laughs> well, she went zero for three in the snatch. She went three for three in the cleaner jerk. Eighty-five kilos. I, I don't imagine that's going to hold for a medal in the cleaner jerk. Unfortunately. She made three lifts, just not the right three. Right. Yep, she's still young. She's still got plenty of competitions left in her, despite having been competing. I mean, she's been competing for the last eight years, uh, since 2014 at the Youth European Championships, um, but still, still a young athlete.
Very strong opener for yeah. Maria Jimenez. Good lead for yep, three whites. Some uh, some lifters, you know, they walk up, you know, they hide their emotions well. Maria, you know, you really can see how much this means for her. And she'll let you know when she's not happy. She will. You know, she famously stared down <laughs> the left-hand judge uh, on her opening snatch. Solid. You know, I hope someone out there turns that into a weightlifting meme of her just glaring at the <laughs> at the referee. So this, I think, is a really important lift. Very. Uh, not just for Lomachinska, but for all of us to try and work out what's going to happen. Well, she did drop her opener here. She had 90, correct? Yeah, yeah. Now she's down to 87. Very strong clean. Very strong. I think she's trying to secure a medal before she starts worrying about the gold. Ah. Okay. A little bit soft on that trip. Okay. For those of you who just tuned in, she no won the snatch Loma portion Chica with 80 kilos, three. but that's a no lift on her opener. It's bad news for her. It's good news for Julian Imperio. Well, the, the downside here is she may not have had a chance to take uh, a lift in between Julia's lifts. Right. So she was going to follow herself anyway, so this may have been a strategic move to lower that opener and get on the board, like you said, secure a medal, and then she take a little bigger jump. Mm -hmm. You only got that two-minute clock. So two-minute clock just begins now. Again, a little bit more on the uh, on the short interview we had with Julia Imperio. Uh, she mentioned the fact that her favorite lift from this last training sort of few months has been this 105 kilo clean that she's hit. Uh, we also asked her, we're interested if she had any, any injuries or anything like that. Okay, the replay on this Lomachinska jerk, I think shows, yeah, as Max mentioned, yes. some extremely soft elbows, which can't really disguise the fact that there was a press out there. So she's, she's going to come back and, and hit this on a second attempt. Taking um, full advantage of the ammonia there. Right. Julia mentioned that she didn't have any injuries, only pains, which the distinction there uh, has to be noted. Again, it's an incredible clean. Wow. That looks much better. Much more solid jerk. Yeah, and you know something interesting there? On the last two cleans that she's done, as easy as they look, she then takes a little step forward with her right foot, just turns off center at the top. Right. Potentially a little extra strength on one side that maybe led to, you know, the elbows being a little wobbly. Yeah. Play. yeah, she turns slightly but keeps her focus straight. You can see the bar rotating. Potentially she holds it wonky, yeah. Some kind of imbalance or she's been a little crooked there. But the most important thing there is she makes that lift, which moves her way into the lead at this point. Here's Maria Gomenez from Spain, her second attempt at 88 kilos. Solid clean as well. She's definitely in the fight for a medal here. Oh. Excellent jerk. Yeah. There's no doubt on that. No. I mean, the difference in the length of the split between Maria Gomez and uh, Olga Shapiro is insane. Right. But both successful jerk techniques. I mean, she looks like she's got so much more. The clean was easy, the jerk was easy. So now it's a battle for what potentially is a silver here in the clean and jerk. Right. I think before that we're going to see... No, yeah, maybe we will see the battle. I mean, Maria Gomez does have another attempt. Her best ever clean and jerk is 90 kilos. She did that in uh, at the World Championships in Uzbekistan. 
she may go 91 for a competition record, but before she gets the chance is Adelina Lomachinska's final attempt. 89 kilos to extend her lead. Another great clean. Little step forward. What appears to be a solid jerk. We'll see what yeah. they say on that elbow. Yeah. Here's the one. She's yeah. got no lift. And she's got no challenge cards because of the snatch. Right. So that's her final. It's a shame. I mean, she's still in the lead right now. Of course, Julian Perio can come out and make 90 kilos for her opener if, if she drops opener down to there and she'll she'll move up into the lead. Whether Julia will do that just to secure the gold before she, she jumps up and looks for a, a personal record, I don't know. Maybe she feels comfortable enough, com uh, you know, confident enough that she can just come out heavier than that. Right. Yeah, and just as expected, Maria Jimenez is going to bump up to 91 kilos. That gives her a new personal record. I don't think it's going to make any difference to her placing. Ideally, we'd be able to take a look at the scoreboard right now and just see what's going on there. She's currently staring the bar down. Here she comes. A lot of intensity. Well, the... Uh, the plate loaders are sprinting off the platform to get out of the way. So this doesn't move her up. She's currently in silver. A medal is secured. This is just for a personal record in competition. 91 kilos, 200 pounds. Prefer, prepare Very. for a loud scream, I think. Very solid. Wow. She held back, though. Yeah, you know, I think she did. She had, well, emotionally or in terms of the lift that she took? Both. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was going to scream. She, uh, I mean, that was a fantastic lift. Yeah. She could have done 95, it looks like. It was excellent. Point. Yeah. Looked really, really good. After a tough call for her opening snatch where they, uh, they turned her down after a good lift. She's really switched it on and hit some big lifts. We yeah. now have three attempts remaining. Julia Imperio coming out, 92 kilo opener. Lowered her opener for the minimum to win. Right. And medal in the clean and jerk. This some 13 kilos below her best clean. I expect this is gonna look like a training weight. Very easy. Wow, she's so Just fast. Very, very strong. Oh, you know what? I think she needs to be a bit careful with letting the bar go there. She definitely let go above her shoulders. It's technically a no lift. We're going to have to see if the jury are uh, going to hold her accountable to that. So far, no movement from them, but... We've seen that happen, uh, most Olympics. notably, I think, Kate Nye, the Olympics, got called for that on her, I want to say it was on her second attempt snatch. She came back out and made the lift, but prevented her from going even heavier. Let's see it again. Amazing lockout. She lets go early, but they are not... Oh, there's a little bit of movement, actually. Yep, there's some movement from the jury, but no, I think she's okay. It's hard oh, to no, tell. no, no, the jury have beckoned someone over. Jury stop, here we go. I think this is going to be a no lift. Oh, no technical stop. No. Something's going on here. Either way, it's not really going to matter because Julia can just do that again. But right now, the clock is running down. We've just seen a message get passed to the back room, presumably to Julia's team, either telling her that the lift has been turned down or just to be careful next time. 97 kilograms uh, yeah. on the back. Oh, okay. 
they've not uh, not stopped. So. No. So 97 kilos here for Julia. This is four kilos under the most that she's ever made. Yeah, her best in the clean jerk, 101 kilos. She has made 97 kilos before. That was at the European Championships last year where she took fourth place. Wow. Okay, here we go. She's she's going up, 100 kilos. It's an eight kilo jump. Yeah. That's a very significant jump here. I think we're pretty confident this would be an easy clean. Yeah. Well, if there's one thing with Julia, it's that you're not worried that she's going to get called for a press out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the famous last words. I'm sure there are people out there who are yelling at me right now for saying that. <laughs> There'll always be somebody yelling at you, Seb. There will. Fiddling with the collars. Well, we here. won't go into it, but that's happened since we've been here. We've had <laughs> a lot of raised <laughs> voices. <laughs> for sure. Okay, 100 kilos. This is an enormous lift for Julian Perry. It really sets herself apart from the rest of the competition. Very nice. It's tough there on the jerk. Max just turned and gave me a stare as though that was somehow my fault because I mentioned that we'd never seen her press out. Well, I stand by that. He's, that is true. <laughs> you know, that I don't know. I will say that clean was a little bit off. Yeah. She landed on her toe. Yeah. Heel was completely off the ground. Uh, not a strong position to be in. Um, yeah, for someone who cleans 105 to, to have 100 do that, certainly not reassuring. I don't know if you noticed anything about that jerk as well. It looked to me like... As she dip and drive, she really, she went back a lot. Yeah. Let's see the replay here. Did she ever lock out? Oh, no. I mean, for most lifters, that's a lockout, but for her, that's, you know, <laughs> she's still way off. Yeah, that uh, the timing was way off there. Mm. She, she did not meet the bar in the split. She was already on the ground, arms not even extended. Mm-hmm. Well, she's going for 102. She really has nothing to lose here. She's already got it. Right. Gold's locked across the board. Or no, sorry. Just the clean and jerk in total. Yeah. Silver, gold, gold. The third gold being the most important. She's Another got that. She uh, is the European champion. She's going up again. The loaders are falling Jerry over on the platform. The trying to get up there quick the enough. Potentially this is just to buy time to rest. If she knows she can clean up to 105, she may just take another shot at it. Right. And also, like you said, I mean, she's normally so technically solid in the jerk. The timing issue, mm. you know, maybe she knows that she can correct that for this lift. But it's not easy when you know that you've just become the European champion to maintain that level of motivation to come and hit a lift that ultimately means very right. little by the way of right. at least medals. But she's going up again, 104 kilos. I'm looking at my records to see if this is going for anything. I mean, European senior records 112. It's a European standard. Nobody's yet hit it, so she's not looking for that. Maybe this is a a training record? Maybe she's done 103 kilos in the gym and never 104. That'd be my my first guess. Right. Give herself a shot at a personal record clean and jerk here. So here we have 104 kilos, the final lift of the 49 kilo A session. Yeah, and that, you know, 
it, we see that more yeah. often than not when someone makes a lift that wins them a championship and they go up. It's very difficult to make themselves yeah. go under it. It can be challenging to uh, to keep going, you know, yeah. once you've crossed the finish line. It would be interesting to see the sort of, uh, well, just sort of how she's feeling right now. Is she, is she happy that she won or is she disappointed by what is essentially an underwhelming performance for her? I mean, the gold medal is the most important thing. It's really the only thing that matters, but she snatched, you know, six kilos below her best. She, she clean and jerked. Uh, nine kilos below her best, but she walks away with the gold. So, yeah, who knows? Well, you know, a lot of that too comes comes down to how you prepare for this mentally. What do you What are your priorities as a lifter, as yeah. a team? You and your coach working out your your strategy, your plan. If you show up to something like this and you've got an open ended plan, and you end up in a situation like that, it can end up spiraling out of control and right. being, you know, what what appears to you to be a negative event. You yeah. know, but if you come in with the expectation that your priorities are to win, which she did, yeah. you get your medals and everything on top of that is, you know, is the the icing on the cake, then you're fine if, if something doesn't go your way. Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard plenty of stories of you, Max, as a young coach, pulling athletes out of competitions after they'd <laughs> won, despite having more attempts, because uh, to quote, well, to quote those who said it, you know, the competition's about winning, not about what you hit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can confirm or deny <laughs> Those, uh, those rumors, but I'm sure a lot of people listening know what I'm talking about. They've heard that too. <laughs> that sounds like an extreme, but potentially. 